morning. Good morning. This is um, Siobhan. I will be oh. uh, in the room in about 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. We will start momentarily. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Richardson? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? <clears throat> Dr. Ray? I can hear you, Mr. Richardson. Thank you. Might want to put your mic. Talk to your mic, Doctor. You're barely there, Doctor Red. We hear you. Is that better? It's same, but we can hear you. Yeah. It's okay. not as clear as everyone else. Is that any better? A little better, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to let you know that uh, Pastor Jackson Graham, our Director of Campus Ministry, is on the call and she will offer the invitation. I'm so sorry, I didn't catch her name. Pastor Jackson Hi, Jackson Graham. Graham. Thank you for joining us. Blessings. Whenever you're ready, we are ready. Okay, do we have a quorum? Well, after we do the roll call, we will know. <laughs> okay. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay. Having problems with my printer. Okay, I will call to order the uh, meeting of the uh, Institutional Advancement Committee of Friday, April 23rd. Uh, we will open the meeting with a prayer and invocation by Pastor Jasmine Graham. Gracious Creator, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you have brought us into the safety of this brand new day as we continue to do the business of Virginia State University. God, I thank you that you will give us wisdom, respect, and kindness as we advance the dialogue of the uh, institution. And it's in the name of our collective faith we pray. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Okay. Now my screen has disappeared. So I think the next thing is oh. the roll call. Mm -hmm. Dr. That's Red. Correct. Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Xavier Richardson. Present. Dr. Valerie Brown here. Mr. Crittenden? Present. 
Ms. Pam Curry here. Dr. Christine Darden. Javon Gordon. She'll be here. back in and oh, she's here. Thank you. I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. The Glenn Stephan. Here. He's here. Thank you. And we'd like to recognize Ms. Brenda Finch from the VSU Foundation. Oh, yes. Yeah. From the VSU Foundation. Here, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. That is the roll call, Ms. Richardson. And it sounds like we have a quorum. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Now I have the approval of the agenda. You have the agenda before you. Uh, are there any additions or corrections or deletions? Hearing none, I assume that the uh, agenda is approved. I don't see the agenda, but I am assuming that I get a little short brief on steps from the agenda. Uh, I don't see it on here, but I will call for a report since you are here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Okay. Um, then we then we'll move on to the approval of the previous meeting minutes. You have those before you. Are there any corrections or additions? If not, and we approve those minutes from the last meeting. Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. Okay. I assume that I'm doing it in the correct fashion on too many boards and too many different ways to approve minutes, but thank you. Okay. Now we're, we'll have remarks from our president, Dr. Excuse me, Mr. Richardson? Yes. Can you need a roll you call of that? Yes, sir. Can you roll call for your agenda and minutes? Okay. I was trying to do the cliff note version. Okay, would you please call? Uh, I assume that you're supposed to do that, not I, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. yes sir. Please, thank you. Mr. Richardson? Which one are we doing, the agenda first? Doing the agenda, and then we'll do the minutes. Yay. Thank you. Dr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Crittenden? Yes. yes. Curry? Yes. Dr. Darden? Ms. Gordon? Yes. Mr. Sesson? Mr. Sesson? And for the minute, Mr. Richardson? Yes. Yes. Dr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Crittenden? Yes. Ms. Curry? Yes. Dr. Darden? Ms. Gordon? Yes. Mr. Sessions? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Dr. Abdul. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. First, I'd uh, just like to thank you all for, for coming and for the work that you do uh, on the committee. Uh, and I'd also just like to have some, some brief remarks just to say that I'm uh, really excited about the work that uh, Ms. Tanya Hall is doing as a new Vice President for External Relations. Uh, and the way that she's really gotten the team to work together uh, to advance the mission of the institution. And I think you'll see that through her presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Now for reports and recommendations, we'll start off with the sponsored programs. Dr. Faison. 
as you press it. Working my way to the slides. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, everyone. Um, as uh, indicated, my name is Omar Face, and I'm here as Associate Vice President for Research, Economic Development, and Graduate Studies uh, to share with you the sponsor program's activity from the third quarter of fiscal year 2021. Uh, by way of reminder, these uh, activities that I'm talking about are going to be activities uh, that are um, involving uh, grants and contracts pursued by faculty and students, and this is reporting up through the end of March of 2021. So we'll begin with the number of proposals processed. Uh, and so these are the number of uh, grant applications that have been submitted by faculty and staff. Uh, we are up to 84 this year. As you can see, that is a significant increase uh, over prior yes. years. Um, and that dollar value of 44.37 million on those is as well. That is additional growth beyond what we saw in the second quarter. Uh, in the second quarter, we were outpacing the prior years by about 25 grants, and that number is now up to 29. Um, along with that growth, then, is, uh, is a growth in the number of grants that we have currently in our portfolio. Uh, while we have been for a significant amount of time holding steady in, in and around uh, the mid 80s, we have now gotten up to 93 funded grants in our portfolio. And while I think that is a great number, I think the best measure of our activity is actually in our sponsor programs expenditures because that's the money that's actually going out to, to pay salaries, to purchase supplies, to purchase equipment. Um, and so for us, we're actually a little bit down. We've been down all year. Um, we are closing the gap on prior years, though. So we are at 17.39 million uh, in expenditures. Um, that is about $900,000 behind last year. Um, however, we have closed that gap from again what I reported in quarter two, where we were about 1.7 million now. So um, uh, our sponsored programs expenditures have actually picked up in this quarter. Um, I do feel like we're still going to be a little bit behind where we've been in the last couple of years, but uh, we are definitely closing that gap. And I will close uh, with our indirect cost recovery. Uh, and so these are uh, funds that come back to the university uh, from some funding agencies that help to support our infrastructure. Um, this is actually growing, and so we are at now $641,000 recovered. Uh, that is more than we've had in prior years, than any prior year at this point, uh, and putting on us on pace to have the most in the way of indirect cost recovery that we've had here at the institution. And I'm happy to take that you have at this time. Do you have any questions of Dr. Faison? Well, we appreciate the great work that you continue to do um, in terms of increasing the number of grants that uh, we receive, uh, particularly during this pandemic as a way to continue to sustain the organization and to put uh, us as a leader in, in, in research and some of the other things we're doing. Thank you. Okay, next we'll have a gov government relations update by Mr. Burton, our director. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Eldon Burton, Director of Government Relations. All right, so the General Assembly wrapped up its legislative session uh, in March and the governor's veto session earlier this month. The last time I presented to the board, I highlighted that this was the largest budget that the institution has ever received. That includes full funding for capital projects like the art building, the admissions building, the technology upgrades, waterproofing the buildings on campus, and so on. On top of that, 
At the conclusion of this recent General Assembly session, we were able to secure an additional $34 million for HVAC upgrades campus-wide. Also, all of the previously unallotted funding for Agency 212 and Agency 234 over the biennium was restored. We were also able to pass budget language that would allow the institution to access the U.S. Department of Education's HBCU Capital Financing Program. We noticed that in other states, institutions had, restrict, or had restrictions from the state that prevented them from accessing the program. So we used similar language that FAMU uh, used a previous two years ago uh, in their general, their Florida General Assembly to make sure that we had access here in Virginia. Now, why is that important? In the last federal COVID relief bill, the Department of Education recently discharged approximately $1.6 billion of debt provided to 45 HBCUs that participate in the capital financing program. And although we did not have any specific projects that we're currently looking at to fund through the program uh, for future packages that may arise, we want to make sure that we had access. Uh, we made it clear to the state that when drafting the bill that uh, we would seek approval uh, from the state before financing and financing with the federal government and that we weren't looking to do any projects behind their backs, but this could potentially relieve some debt for them. Uh, because of, of the president's role, because of the president's role as the vice chair of the Council of Presidents, we were asked to submit the Higher Education Unified Budget Amendment on the state on the Senate side, uh, which ultimately allocates 60 million for fiscal year 21 and 73.5 million for fiscal year 22 to all of Virginia's public universities. Under this amendment, Virginia State University was allocated 1.7 million to maintain affordable access in both fiscal year 21 and 22, as well as additional funding for operational support and to address the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. And as you can see, the General Assembly also passed a budget amendment uh, that would allow for up to a 5% salary increase for state employees and adjunct faculty. Getting into legislative bills uh, that were passed by the General Assembly, there weren't a ton of higher ed bills, but here I've highlighted at least three for you. Uh, one bill was patroned by Delegate Aird, and it prohibits colleges from asking applicants on their application if he or she has a criminal history, an effort known as banning the box. Uh, there's approximately 70 million people in the country with a criminal history, and two-thirds of them will not complete an application if there's a question regarding um, their criminal history. House Bill 2120, which directly impacts you as board members, uh, it requires universities to publish the names of their board members, uh, the dates of upcoming meetings, instructions for accessing those meetings, and an archive of the agendas on their website. It also requires board members to post a single email address and an email address, or a single email address, or an email address for each member in which the public can submit comments. Dr. Red is working with uh, Chev and a task force of board liaisons on some of the more detailed logistics of carrying out the bill that they'll report to Chev in July, and Chev will take those recommendations and they're required to report back to the General Assembly uh, with uh, final updates in November. Other bills that were approved include one that would allow undocumented immigrants to receive financial aid at Virginia colleges and the governor's G3 initiative, which allows for tuition-free community college for low- and middle-income students. Not long following the governor's veto session, the candidates running for governor have to start campaigning for their primary elections. Virginia State University was selected as the site for Virginia's first gubernatorial debate, where five candidates met on stage in Anderson Auditorium with CBS 6's Bill Fitzgerald as the moderator. The president highlighted within his opening remarks, but the the real winners of the debate were really our students uh, who were able to engage and speak with candidates following the debate. Our mass comm students captured behind the scenes interviews with Dr. Bellamy and each candidate highlighting their more personal side. And we also had a videographer to help us capture some of the clips behind stage that we'll be using to help develop a recruitment video for our political science department. These are some of the pictures backstage with Jennifer Carroll Foy and Jennifer McClellan, as well as 
uh, our mass comm students getting everybody mic'd up and ready for the video. So as you may know, President Biden uh, signed the American Rescue uh, Plan in March. Like past COVID relief bills, there was direct funding for higher ed institutions, as well as a set aside for HBCUs and minority serving institutions. Uh, right now, they're working on an infrastructure bill that would make significant uh, investments into HBCUs. But the exciting part about that is that it wouldn't be a COVID-related bill with restric restrictions. We also worked with Dr. Palm and Dr. Boyd to submit an application for a federal earmark uh, that would seek funding for VSU's Public Health Institute. Each member of Congress can submit up to 10 projects to service their districts, and we're hopeful that we'll be one of the 10 that Congressman Keechan puts forward. President Abdullah continues to engage our federal legislators and federal leaders. Uh, he recently met virtually with Cedric Richmond in the White House, along with other HBCU presidents to uh, discuss infrastructure, uh, developing medical schools, increasing the Pell Grant, et cetera. President Abdullah also mentioned in his uh, comments the concerns for policing in light of some of the cases that we've recently had happen in our communities, as well as the need for additional resources. Uh, these pictures are from the press conference at our vaccination clinic. Uh, in attendance, we had Chesterfield County Board of Supervisors, uh, their county administrator. We had the Deputy Chief Diversity of Equity and Inclusion for the state, as well as uh, folks from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and the Virginia Department of Health, representatives from each district. Uh, kudos to Hubie Harris and Gwen for putting the event together. Uh, but I wanted to point out that these are the type of services that we provide, like the vaccination clinic and the mobile health units that allow for us to submit stronger applications for things on the federal level, like the earmark that we just highlighted. Uh, here's President Abdullah. He met personally with Senator Kane before uh, this actual meeting with the class, but Senator Kane came to the class and was a guest lecturer in Dr. Bellamy's new civil rights movement class, and he also joined as uh, they had a discussion with Angela Rye uh, and one of the founders of the Black Lives Matter movement with a group of classes as well. So I always like to end my presentation with highlighting who's engaged and who's on campus. Do we have any questions? Any questions for Mr. Burton? I did have one quick question. Um, have our vaccination efforts been impacted by the pause of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Uh, I would submit that question to Mr. Harris. Um, yes, and that's the short answer. How it's been impacted is simply uh, there were certain locations throughout the Crater and Chesterfield Health Districts that was inaccessible uh, where you may have had someone who's elderly or um, you're a transient and like a migrant worker, uh, particularly along the Jeff Davis corridor or out in Sussex County, as well as Surrey County, they may not have the ability to get here to the MPC. So we had planned to use the mobile clinics to go there with the Johnson & Johnson uh, dose because uh, it would have been one shot and they would have been completely vaccinated. Um, so they're working through plans on, on uh, how to go and vaccinate those folks. Um, and perhaps uh, with the Pfizer, it's 21 days. And so the thought is to um, schedule their second appointment and go back. It becomes a little more tricky if the person is a migrant farm worker because they may not necessarily be here. And so they're opening up, um, exposing those folks to a vaccine finder, which doesn't work so well with our elderly population who may, uh, they may contact, you know, like one of the departments on aging and, and we would work with the uh, fire EMS and actually go and vaccinate those folks in their home. Okay. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Any other questions? Well, Mr. Burton, thank you for the very comprehensive government relations update and sharing with us all of the great benefits that uh, are coming to Virginia State University as a result of what's happening um, at the state level as well as the federal level. And we certainly thank you for all of the behind the scenes work that uh, you have put into this to ensure that we are beneficiaries of some of this great work. And also 
Uh, thank you for involving our students in it as well, uh, making sure that that learning goes beyond the traditional classroom. And in, in all we do, we should seek opportunities to uh, engage our students, and we appreciate that as well. And lastly, we thank Dr. Abdullah for his continued um, presence and, and engagement and visibility, which is uh, reaping large benefits for the institution and our students. Thank you all. Next, we'll have a communications update by Dr. Gwendolyn Dandridge, who is the Director of Communications. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Can everyone see the slides and hear me okay? Can those on the screen hear me okay? And see the slides? I should take that as a yes? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I'm Gwen Williams Dancers, Director of Communications here at Virginia State University, and it's my pleasure to uh, present to you our efforts as it relates to Strategic Plan Priority 4, which is the VSU brand, to define the VSU brand and tell the story by demonstrating and communicating the value of Virginia State University. And I truly believe that to everything there is a season, and as it relates to Strategic Plan uh, Priority Number 4, this has certainly been hard in time for Virginia State University. So if we could go ahead and again, thank you, Travis, for uh, helping me operate the slides here. So if we began on March 16th, we heard, and I'm certain that many of you saw through all of the media reports, uh, the story about uh, the mass vaccination clinic here at Virginia State University, thanks to the hard work of Mr. Hubie Harris. But uh, they contacted us, I believe, was on Monday, and said they wanted to have a press conference on that Wednesday and asked if we could pull that press conference together at the multi-purpose center. So the middle picture that you see uh, right here, you can see that that press conference was indeed a success. It was uh, attended by all of the area media, and we did end up getting a tremendous amount of media coverage. You can see here on the left, the Progress Index, Chesterfield Observer, uh, NBC 12, ABC, CBS, all of the local stations were in attendance at that press conference, and so it was a uh, um, certainly a win for Virginia State University as it relates to media coverage and not only showing that we're doing good here at Virginia State University or that we're doing well here at Virginia State University, but we're also doing good in terms of community outreach. And as of this morning, the mass vaccination clinic at Virginia State University has vaccinated 77,000 people. And so we're very, very excited about that effort and how Virginia State University, even from a public relations standpoint, is uh, very instrumental in outreach to the community. One of the things that I smile about every time I look at these pictures is while this was going on, there's another picture of me leaning down talking to Dr. Abdullah. And what we were talking about at that time was that while this was happening, there was another story involving Virginia State University that was going viral on a national level. And that was the story that was going viral on social media regarding Dr. Abdullah being approached by a student on campus and that student challenging him to a basketball duel. So unless you were Rip Van Winkle, you probably saw that video. But uh, to, to the untrained eye, that may have just looked like a fun video. But from a public relations standpoint, I can't tell you how big a deal that video was. But I want to just let you go ahead and just listen to this, and then we'll talk about the impact of that video. This is from TMZ, the National Network TMZ. Whoa! 
watch his video and my mind is blown every time I watch it. Take a look. <laughs> Um, then you, you were considered 
Why do you want to consider the white? I thought of the students just learning the news. All uh, things have changed for the university, that the school is changing, the atmosphere is changing, like the culture is changing. Black lives matter, like matters more than ever now, more than they did back then. So I feel like that that's like a good investment. It won't be a waste of money. And now, students, as well as faculty and alumni, will join forces to reimagine who those four buildings should pay tribute to for this historic university's next chapter. In their time, in their day and age, they were the, the scions. They were, you know, the people to look up to. Um, this is different. This is, that's, that's the past, and this is the present. I asked the school's VP just how much this initiative will cost. She said the dollar amount has not been determined yet, but that it really doesn't matter. She calls this process priceless and adds, quote, it means that much to us. Live on your side tonight, Brent Sullivan, NBC 12. All right, thank you. So as you can see, we got very good coverage, and I'm sure you will agree that putting DC Hall out as the face of this story was wisdom, and so we're excited about all of the great things that she is doing here at Virginia State University. And just if I may pause here while it's on my mind, another thing that, uh, again, trying to get her acclimated into the campus and the culture and everything here at Virginia State University, she will be one of the judges for the Miss BSU head this coming Sunday. And so we're excited about her serving in that capacity. I am serving as the mistress of ceremony, so we'll be double teaming a little bit there. So the next story that made very good uh, media impressions. You just heard Elvin talk about the debate that was held here on the VSU campus. But from a public relations standpoint, this was a win, win, win. Elvin said that the students won here, and I do agree with that. Uh, and certainly the candidates got an opportunity to say their platform. So this was truly a trifecta as it relates to Virginia State University. Uh, thanks to your goddess, um, James, and her team in helping to set up the venue. But we were very, very intentional of ensuring that no matter what shot a camera got during this debate, you would see Virginia State University somewhere in every single shot for an entire hour of prime time network affiliate uh, television. And even, you can see even over here, we tried to be strategic and that if they got an up high shot that was shooting down that you didn't see the back drop, we put the rug there so that you did not miss Virginia State University in any shot here. And I think Dr. Abdullah and I, he was up and I was texting him just saying what favor Virginia State University was getting in this moment. And we were counting the number of times that not only did you see Virginia State University, because that was in pretty much every shot, but just how many times the candidate said Virginia State University during that debate. And the Dr. Abdullah counted nine, I counted ten, but it could have been that one time that I screamed Virginia State University. <laughs> Just joking, or am I? Uh, so again, it was truly a night of winning for Virginia State University. And then this story coming on the heels of that debate, and this again, thanks to the very hard work of Hubie Harris and um, Dr. Palm, as we introduced the Virginia State University Public Health Institute, when you got out of your car in the parking lot, if you look just over the breezeway, you would see the uh, mobile units that we deployed out into the community to take vaccinations out into the community. And you can see here in this particular shot again in our attempt to get senior level management face out there. This is Dr. Palm back here in the shadows, but he was the face that we put out for that particular um, initiative. But we also wrote a press release that was distributed and in the press release, the, uh, the article that read in the Progress Index, the quote that they used came from Mr. Huey Harris. And so this was indeed another very good public relations initiative for Virginia State University because, again, it pointed out how well we are, how much good we're trying to do in the community. If you look here at the headline from the Progress Index, we were starting to feel left out, seniors relieved to see the VSU mobile uh, COVID vaccination unit coming into their community. And so, again, just pointing out that we're also good stewards uh, as it relates to being partners in our community. So we can move on to the next story. So those were just some of the uh, many stories that were covered during the month of March and into April relating to Virginia.
Virginia State University. This was another one of the stories I'm sure many of you heard about the situation involved, involving Lieutenant Karad Nazario, um, who was an alum of Virginia State University, and uh, involving the incident that happened down in Windsor. But a uh, number of media outlets contacted Virginia State University and wanted us to comment on how our alum was treated by the police there in that incident. And so Dr. Abdullah was the face for that particular story. So we did end up getting quite a bit of media attention from that story as well. Now, the second part of my presentation, I was asked at the last board meeting about how we were doing as it relates to social media and comparing that to other HBCUs. So we did the research. My source is Meltwater, which is the media monitoring company that we subscribe to. And this is a slide that lets you see how we are doing. In the blue here is Hampton University, Norfolk State is in the green, and then this is Virginia Union here in the red. And this is how many social media mentions they had in the month of March, from March 1st through the 31st. And you can see uh, that if you, this is Virginia State here in the orange, we had 5,000. So we were beating our outnumbering the number of social media mentions by almost two to one of all of the other HBCUs here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So I think I was so excited by that news that I got a little beside myself and decided to compare us to VCU. And so VCU is in the yellow here, but even uh, as you look at that they are beating us by about 1,200 mentions, but that I, this is still a, a source of pride for us here because, as I'm sure all of you know, Virginia, VCU is 10 times the size of VSU, and their uh, public relations department is 10 times my size. And so, um, so yeah, so we're still very, very, very pleased by these numbers, and this is a thanks to the hard work of Taj and Harris, who really keeps us out there in social media. And this is not just what we say about ourselves, but this is this is counting any time anyone else uses the BSU um, name or social media handle on social media. So we're very pleased by that. After we looked at those numbers, we decided to look at the traditional media. And what we found was in the month of March, Virginia State University was mentioned 584 times in the news, and the biggest source of mention for Virginia State University was the Richmond Times Dispatch, who mentioned Virginia State University 234 times, followed by the ABC, CBS, and then the Progress Index, and then finally NBC 12. So again, very pleased by those numbers. I was asked the question, how does this compare to previous years? So I went back and compared it. I did not compare it to 2020, because of course in March of 2020, we were in the middle of a pandemic, and so everything was uh, COVID-19, so I went back and compared it to March of 2019, and we were meeting those numbers by almost two to one in, um, in 2021. One of the other things we wanted to take a look at is who is talking about Virginia State University in terms of new reach. From reach from a public relations standpoint is the number of potential people who will see or hear your article. And Yahoo.com, which has a reach of 61 million, ran our renaming story. Of course, we just saw TMZ, which has a reach of 26 million, that ran the president's basketball story. And again, Yahoo down here with 61 million also ran our mass vaccination story. So we, I then wanted to take another look to see, well, what is the largest uh, media outlet that has said something about Virginia State University. As you move on to the next slide, Travis, we found that it was the Washington Post, which has a reach of 109 million people, that in the month of March they did run stories about Virginia State University. So I wanted to further look at what were those stories. And if we move to the next slide, Travis, you can see here that all of these were stories that were run by the Washington Post about Virginia State University. They, most of them were about about the Nazario case, but again, here they talked about our renaming story. So all of those were stories that were run in the Washington Post with a reach of 109 million people. So from a PR standpoint, we were very, very pleased about that. At this time, I want to pause and ask um, VP Hall to come up to talk about an initiative that we're working on out of our department. Good morning. Uh, so since I've joined the VSU family and I've been um, on tour with a lot of the chapters, uh, one of the questions that I was, was asked 
quite frequently is we keep talking about strategic plan priority number four, the VSU brand, telling our story. What is our story? VP Hall, how do I tell our story? If I'm alum and I'm talking to a company or a friend or a family member, what do I say? How do I say it? So I paused and I said, I'll get back to you. And I went and I spoke to uh, Dr. Dandridge and we got together and we decided to, that we were gonna put together a think tank. And that's exactly what we did. And I will turn it over to Dr. Dandridge to talk about how we pulled that together and how I think we did something that a marketing company um, gets paid millions of dollars to do. We did it with the best of the brightest at Virginia State University. So as Vicki Hall said, what, what she uh, tasked us with was to come up with a think tank um, of, of a variety of people, if you will, who are stakeholders in Virginia State, so that we could get together to have that conversation. So if you move to the next slide, Travis, this was the group that we pulled together. Well, that's a slide just went again to her, uh, Vicki Hall's point of people saying, what is Virginia State University? What is our brand slogan? Those were all some of the things that people People tend to say when they talk about Virginia State, transforming lives through education, transformative experience, opportunity, university, building a better world, VSU today. So what we wanted to do was try to narrow it down so that we were all speaking the same language. This was the group that we uh, pulled together. Uh, of course, uh, Tanya Hall, Kawashi Clemens from the administration, myself, Sharmika Harris, and Sharmika was very, very instrumental in helping us to identify the right alums to put around the table uh, for this meeting. And we uh, we chose Franklin Johnson, who of course is the president of the BSU uh, Alumni Association, and Everett Jackson, Valerie Abbott Jones, because we wanted to get uh, more seasoned alums, and then alums who were millennials, and then uh, to also get someone who was maybe in that middle group. We brought a professor on, and then we also brought in two students, and wanted to be strategic about that because we bought and students who aren't just students, but they were marketing students who could be very instrumental in helping us to talk about branding. And of course, Elvin Burton was on this committee as well. So in the next slide, this is what some of the things that we looked at doing. We talked about wanting to do a, have a brand slogan. And a brand slogan, of course, is just your advertising uh, tagline that points towards the benefit, just something very short and succinct that speaks to the vibe of your university. And in addition to that, we wanted to talk about an elevator pitch. Because again, if someone were to approach you very quickly and say, tell me about Virginia State University, we wanted to say, no, exactly what you would say. So here's what we came up with. After we, we met with the group, we talked to the group, and uh, we moved on, and we wanted to, we just began to brainstorm. And we talked about the VSU experience, we talked about the academic experience, and then we talked about the VSU story. And, okay, I'm back. And we talked about the VSU story, so these were some of the things that the people around the table talked about as it relates to Virginia State University. When you think of Virginia State University, these are the things that we think of. So that was the end of our first meeting. We came back from the second meeting. I took all of this feedback and decided to try to put this into five different points that were overriding themes of Virginia State University. And I won't read through all of these, but uh, because they're in your board book and you can read them at your leisure. But one of the things we wanted to point out that we don't expect anyone to memorize this, like the Pledge of Allegiance. What we wanted, what we're hoping um, that what we would do throughout this process, if you go back, Travis, is for people to be able to look at each of these and then decide which one would you use in which situation. So it's kind of like the appliances in your kitchen. You know, if you're baking a cake, you may not need the microwave. So, you know, these were all of the things that you have at your disposal and you would choose when you needed to use which one in what situation. For example, if I'm Tanya Simmons and I'm trying to talk about the culture here from an HR standpoint, perhaps I would use them for that the faculty and staff and administration are engaged in and dedicating, dedicated to providing a personable, stable, nurturing, holistic atmosphere that's conducive to learning, growing, and transforming. So that may be what I would use if I'm Rodney Hall and I'm trying
trying to promote Virginia State University to a grandmother, perhaps it would be number two that I would go strong on talking about how Virginia State University is an opportunity university that changes the economic outlook for generations to come, that we're basically the dream of our ancestors. And so, if you, again, I'm trying to hold, I would go and be able to recite all of them, depending on who I'm talking to. So that was what we were intentional about doing here. So if we move on to the next one. After we came up with these uh, five points that would be our elevator pitch, we then wanted to break that down and say, so how then do we really describe Virginia State University in a nutshell, in a tagline? And we threw several things on the table here, but the one that seemed to stick the most was the one that's highlighted here in orange, which is simply that greater happens here. And, uh, you know, as we talked through that on the, in the meeting, we just said this really speaks to our past, it speaks to our present, and it speaks to our future because no matter where you are in life or when you get to Virginia State University, greater will happen while you are here. And so we thought then, well, how would that look visually? And so we looked at uh, the possibility of a a logo that would uh, still keep the tradition of the clock tower here with the current the VSU logo in the middle, Virginia State University logo in the middle, that would say greater happens here. Now again, it's very important to note that this is just phase one of this of this plan. This is just we are we're thinking through it and just wanted to bring you up to date on some of the things that we have been working on, some of the things that we've been working on, and this would have to go through a number of vetting processes through faculty and staff and students before any of it would be made official. But we just wanted to introduce it to you, it to you in this in this infant stage of one of the projects that that we have been working on. So that does conclude my report, and thank you for your indulgence for this. So a lengthy report, but it has been an exciting time here at Virginia State University. Great or truly has been happening here. And so at this time, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I have to stand up and give kudos for that. Thank you. President Abdullah, a great hire. A great hire. I, I mean, this, I mean, this is exactly what we are looking for. It's a shot in the arm for the university. I mean, we have been saying this is what we were looking for, looking toward, and to now see it manifest and actually come into fruition in so many different ways through this position and, and obviously through you. Um, it, it just tells me we are on the right path to get our story out there and get our enrollment up. I mean, this was just excellent, 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 excellent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are you done? I would, no, I would. I, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, 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 Ms. Crittenden. One, one last thing, because i got to get this into uh, President Abdullah. On the video with the basketball, yes. you know the challenge. <laughs> Everybody knows I'm on the top of the air with Norfolk State, and my husband is on the board. So when that video went viral, uh, you know, President's name is uh, J. Adams Gaston. Mm -hmm. So her, I don't know if she called you, but her response to her was that she did not need to challenge you in the basketball because everyone knows she's Dr. J. <laughs> <laughs> okay, basketball people do <laughs> Down over your head. So I just thought I had to throw that punchline into you, but supposedly something is coming to challenge you and all of it will go viral, but I'll leave that to then. But okay. But well, great job, great job. Thank okay, you. yeah. I would I would just like to ditto what um Dr. Brown said. And um I think I love the strategic and comprehensive way and the way you're tying everything in. Uh, so that we'll all be on the same page and with the redundancy of the message, whatever, you know, you decide on. I mean, it just makes uh, the job of branding the university so much easier. So kudos to everybody, the think, the think tank. Uh, I am so impressed with the numbers in terms of the press coverage and the fact that it is overwhelmingly positive. So thanks to everybody and continued success. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, 
Um, just wanted to say, I'm sorry, Mr. Hill isn't on this committee because yesterday during our committee, uh, we went through some of this in relation to academic and student affairs, and he said at the end of it, he was so grateful to see Virginia State being represented in this way as having a community impact, of having a positive impact on our students, our community, the world. Um, and we all definitely echoed that. So this is wonderful. Yeah, and, and I just want to, um, first of all, thank Dr. Dandridge. It was so exciting for me to see your little chart there and to see just how Virginia State stacks up to not just HBCUs, but to your point, like we're right there with the BCUs and probably the UVAs. Yes. So thank you. It was exciting for me to see that. You made my day. Um, and then just to see the innovation, like the think tank, and starting to really think about how we can get our brand out there. So I love this. This was outstanding. Thanks to you. Thanks to Ms. Hall. Um, what an outstanding update. So thank well done. You. Thank you. Uh, if, if I could um, um, add some kudos and talk a little bit about her because she's doing a great job. First, I can't, I wish I could take credit, um, uh, uh, Dr. Brown, uh, but Gwen Williams Dandridge has been at Virginia State for a while. Uh, she came from the news media in Richmond, and actually, this is her second stint working for me. And what I did do was convince her the second time to stick around and keep doing it because she wouldn't do it the first time. Um, and she's doing incredible, incredible work. And I think this is, well, two things I want to highlight about her strategicness. One, she mentioned the idea of putting our renaming video out when University of Richmond had their challenge, right? So that was big. But the other thing, I don't know if you saw in the viral video, that's when I had the jacket to. And so, but to have the foresight to want to work with the young people to do this, not a lot of, you know, us who are a little old are willing to do that. And to really work with them to do that was also something that was pretty fantastic. So I want to thank her for that. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, I also want to thank Dr. Dandridge for doing such a great job and also say that I knew her back in the day when she was uh, a newscaster in Fredericksburg. So I've known her over the years and to see you grow and develop and, and to be here and to stay here. Um, we're, we were sorry to lose you in, uh, in Fredericksburg, but glad to have the game here at Virginia State University. Certainly you're showing how greater uses of our resources are being employed through many different ways and it's going to manifest itself in many different positive metrics that are going to bring great rewards to uh, the university, including, I'm sure, improvements in the number of students who are, are applying, admitted, uh, the name recognition, and certainly what we all like, more dollars coming our way from donors. Uh, you're really helping to put us even on a better place on the map uh, in conjunction with our, uh, the rest of our great team. And thanks for being responsive to our request for social media uh, mentions, et cetera. Um, uh, lastly, Dr. Abdullah, thank you for helping to bring increased recognition and going beyond the call of duty. And thank you for not having a on-the-job injury, uh, workers compensation after about that playing ball with some of these young guys. So we appreciate that too. But in all in all, we thank you and your team for doing so much, Dr. Dandridge. Okay. And the only other suggestion that I would make is that if we can, as we go forward, find a way to provide more ongoing communication with the board of some of these great things so that we can change our elevated speech every week and so we're not saying the same thing over and over uh, uh, but uh, i know that that requires additional resources but just thinking forward if we can get more ongoing communication so that we'll know more to brag about our great university thank you so much uh, i think i see dr brown Mr. Chair, uh, yes, if I can just piggyback on that, I think that's an excellent idea. A lot of us are on social media, so a lot of these um, video clips, if we could get some of them uh, forwarded to us, because if we're not there, sometimes we miss it, and then we can share it on our on our streams and things like that. That would also help to expand the reach. I think that's an excellent idea. Thank you. Thank you. We, we will do that, and I'd like to, Taja, because I know she's here, I'd like you to well, get as many folks social media handles so we can get it directly to them as stuff as things happen. 
Okay. Great. Right. Thank you. Thank you for all those suggestions. Now, Ms. Hall, I think that you're next. I have so many screens open, I can't find my agenda, but if I'm wrong, tell me. But I think uh, we're now going to hear from our Vice President of Institutional Advancement. You are correct, Chairman. Um, good morning, everybody, esteemed members, Board of Visitors. Um, I am, it gives me great pleasure uh, to end our IA committee report with some exciting news. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to top that um, many media hits, but I can top that with some dollars. So, um, Do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm <abused. laughs> So looking at our IA uh, fundraising dashboard report for fiscal year 2021, you will see, and I will quote uh, a report from the Lilly Family uh, Philanthropy, School of Philanthropy, that suggests that we are about to enter a two-year period of philanthropic growth. Um, and that is no more evident than by this dashboard. Currently, we are sitting at $3.1 million from 2,424 donors, compared to last year, where we were at 2.2 million from 2012 donors. Um, I would also like to note in these numbers are the $15,000 that we raised during our Founders Day Challenge. The same report that I just referenced also states that we will see a 4% increase in giving in 2021. Not so at Virginia State University. We see we are seeing a 31% increase in giving this year. Um, this is truly a testament to the passion, love, and commitment of our constituents at Virginia State University. And I would also like to take a moment to acknowledge the significant increase we are seeing from our alums in giving. Thanks to Franklin uh, Johnson, who is the president of our Virginia State University Alumni Association, who never misses an opportunity to thank and remind our alums of their commitment to Virginia State University. So today, our alums are at $1 million in giving versus last year, where they were at $945,000. Um, the other thing that I also like to highlight from this dashboard is we have some new friends who have given very deeply to Virginia State University. You learned about one of them last at our last uh, Board of Visitors meeting. Her name was Susan Blake. She made a gift of $100,000. I'm going to call Shamika up at, up at Harris up later to share about another set of friends that we made this year who gave a six-figure gift uh, just last month. And you will be moved by their story as well. I also want to take note of the increase in student giving this year. While this gift, uh, this number was increased uh, due to an event, I am working on a giving project, um, student giving program with, the, with my team and also the provost office. Um, I was spurred on by doing to do so by our board of visitor, Glenn Sessons, who has shared many ideas with me about how to motivate our students to give today, now, and into the future. So we will be working on that. We are calling it the 1882 Challenge. We're going to challenge our students to give $18.82 every year for the next four years. And as they grow in their careers, we're going to ask them to move the decimal point. So they will eventually move it to wherever it needs to go uh, according to their career and their giving. I'd also like to note that there is, has been a decline in giving among staff and faculty, but we do have an end of the year fiscal um, plan uh, program that's going to be led by Taj and in our Office of Institutional Advancement that will boost those faculty and staff numbers. Um, I wanted to talk about the Mackenzie Scott Fund update. I wanted to give oh, um, Ms. Ms. Hall, on the previous slide, yes, sir. Uh, the 30 million isn't there, right? No, it is not requested. Okay. Um, so I do want to let you know an update on the McKenzie Scott Fund. So what we have done, so there are three focus areas that the president has talked about. Our innovation funds, which our provost gave an overview of yesterday. Um, the enhancements that we're going to be doing to the College of Technology and Engineering, and also investments. So here you see a breakdown of allocations that we are going to make to those three focus areas. I will note that no dollars, no actual dollars have been spent yet. These are just allocations. 
and we still have plans uh, with our chief financial officer and also I'm sure we're going to include the board of visitors in the discussion about what we're going to do with the remaining investment. I'll pause for any questions. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next slide I'd like to show does show some great improvement in our tuition assistance fund. We are currently at 434000 plus dollars. That is at the highest it has ever been. Um, this, in, this investment definitely impacts the institution significantly because it offers an opportunity for our students uh, to fill in gaps that they may have in uh, funding their college education. The awards range from $500 to $2,000, and many of the people that are on this call in this room, our alums, our faculty and staff, support and contribute to this fund. So on behalf of our students, thank you. Also, uh, this week we also hosted a, a virtual scholarship uh, recipient tea where our scholarship recipients and our donors had an opportunity to come together. As you can see from the slide, Board of Visitor Charlie Hill was in attendance. Uh, our VSU Foundation Board Chair, Brenda Stitch Fitch, was, in, was also in attendance. And we also had other foundation board members such as Nardis King and Wilbur Briggs in attendance. This was a great opportunity for our students to thank our donors and our donors to thank our students and for our students to learn, to begin to learn how to give back. Also wanted to take a moment on this slide to highlight some of our FY21 fundraising activities. Uh, we established 30 funds so far to date and we have received a significant number of unsolicited um, unsolicited gifts this year. Those are the best ones when you don't have to go out there. They come to you. Uh, we received $10,000 from Mr. and Mrs. Brown. We have no idea how or why they chose us, but we were happy to receive it. Uh, we did receive $25,000 from Fashion Nova, and Fashion Nova um, is linked with Megan the Stallion. She is the face of Fashion Nova, and she selected a couple of HBCUs to receive the funding this year during Women's History Month. And it was important for her, for, for Virginia State University to receive the $25,000. It went to our TAM program, which is our textile, apparel, and merchandise and manufacturing program that prepares, prepares students for careers in fashion and apparel. Um, the funds will be used to provide merit-based and financial need-based scholarships. And it will also be an opportunity to provide funding for our students to attend important networking events that give them the competitive edge in the market. Uh, next, I'm going to bring up Sharmika S. Harris, who's my right hand and my left foot uh, as my AVP of Institutional Advancement. And she's going to talk about the gift that we received from Lynn Rainville and Baron Schwartz. Good morning, everyone. Um, I had the wonderful opportunity to meet and get to know Lynn Rainville and Baron Schwartz. They came to the institution really wanting to make an investment and make an impact by way of their philanthropy. Um, and so we had um, a lot of dialogue about their, their desires and their intent of making a gift. Um, I shared with them some of our strategic priorities, our strategic plan, and also our opportunities of excellence that we had here at the institution. Um, and so after that dialogue, um, they decided to make the gift starting off at $200,000. And that gift would support cultural experiences and those experiences that um, extend beyond the classroom. So attending study abroad programs and semester at seas and um, those seminars and lectures that really will complement their education here at Virginia State. Um, and so before we close that gift, I, I knew their true intent was to make an immediate impact. And so that $200,000 gift it was to be an endowed fund. So it would grow and continue to provide those opportunities for our students forever and ever. Um, and so I went back to them and asked them would they consider a gift of an additional $15,000 that would complement the $200,000 but make an immediate impact right now, this semester and next semester for our students um, to attend those conferences and those events. 
Um, and they agreed. Um, and so we were happy about that. But then I went back again, just realizing and understanding that their true intent was an immediate impact for our students. And so I asked them would they consider a gift of $50,000 to our tuition assistance fund. Um, and as many of you know, that is our gap funding for students to, to close the gap for their tuition and uh, tuition and fees um, here at the institution. They agreed. And so a gift of $200,000 grew to $265,000 that we were able to bring in in March. And so we were so excited excited about that. Um, they had the opportunity to, to connect with Dr. Dan Roberts and our honors program. Um, and we are looking forward to the benefit that our students will get from that gift, but also them really being engaged with the institution and the students that will um, be the direct recipients of that gift. So thank you. I will also say that the couple has also agreed to support uh, the renaming of some of our buildings on campus too. They understand the importance of that. Um, and they want to stay involved and engaged with us. So thank you, Sharmika, for leading that. Also wanted to thank Omega Psi Phi Fraternity for their $11,000 contribution to their endowment. I uh, would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the brothers of Omega Psi Phi, um, a board of visitor, Charlie Hill, and Glenn Sussman. Um, and we also like to thank Victor Branch, who also helped provide us some advice and some guidance uh, with regard to a submission that we put forth to Bank of America. I wanted to also say that um, the study that I referenced, the Lilly Family Philanthropy uh, study that they put together this year, says that, that in the next two years we will see an increase in funding for universities that focus on uh, social justice. And so that's a 39% increase. So we are diligently working on coming, pulling together a list of those corporations. This next slide highlights, um, it's called a Voluntary Support of Education Survey. And this highlights uh, universities that voluntarily provide information about the number, the amount of support that they get uh, from their alums. As you can see, we're doing very well compared to other, some other universities. Uh, $1. million dollars um, in contribution, alumni dollar contributions compared to some other universities. And uh, there are very various factors that go into why that amount is higher or why some other schools are higher or why some other schools are lower. But I will say that here, the reason is because of, there's passion and love and commitment to Virginia State University. So thank you. Um, the next slide is a list of some corporate prospects we have in the pipeline. In fundraising school, I was always taught that it takes 12 to 14 months to close a gift. So these are some of the corporations that we are starting to begin uh, deep relationships with. Uh, Dominion Energy is not new to us, but Dominion Energy Foundation is new to us. Um, thanks to Elgin Burton's introduction, I met with Anita Powell last week who is the legislative and government and community affairs person for Dominion Energy, and she introduced me to the Dominion Energy Foundation. And she said one of their focus areas was on supporting the community. So I had all the information about what we're doing with our vaccination program and with our public health institute and with our mobile unit. And she was very interested in, that, in learning more about that and encouraged me to put together a proposal that we will be submitting before the end of the month. Um, okay. So we've already talked about the gubernatorial debate, which was hot and heated, which was great because I'm new to Virginia, so it was very interesting for me to get to know who would be representing me. But the one thing I really wanted to use this slide to highlight was how in the Office of Institutional Advancement, the teams that I have the pleasure of leading are uh, working closely together. Government relations, led by Elton Burton. Communications, led by uh, Dr. Uh, Gwen Dandridge, who I will never follow again. Um, and conference and event services, led by Udonis James, put together a wonderful event that night. So we are hosting, and many of you know about Giving Tuesday which happens the Thanksgiving after, uh, happens the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Uh, we're gonna replicate that here. We're gonna call it All In For State Day of Giving. It's gonna be held on June 12th, and it is going to be led by Taj Harris in our Department of um, Institutional Investment, and it is going to be held on June 17th. It's 
to be a day, dedicated day of giving to Virginia State University. We are going to be asking our alums, our faculty, students, and staff, and friends to make a gift to the college uh, of their choice. And as you, as Board of Visitors, we're asking you to consider a challenge match to share this information with your network. We're going to be doing some promotional videos um, that you can post on your Facebook page, your Twitter, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, whatever you're using. And since we were able to raise $35,000 for Giving Tuesday, that is going to be the bar that I am setting for this day. I'd like to raise another $35,000 that day. You will learn more about that soon. Um, and it is part of a, um, you can go to the next one, sorry. It is part of our end of the year fiscal strategies that we have in place. Uh, we are doing something called a 90 day sprint where we put together what we'd like to accomplish over the next 90 days um, in the Office of Institutional Advancement, which is communications, government relations, conference and event services, um, and IA and alumni relations. And some of the activities I just mentioned was the all in for state day of given. We're doing a tuition assistance spring mailing that went out, I believe, last week. Um, so we want to get that $434,000 up, hopefully to $500,000. And we're also reaching out to our donors who have gave to us last year but have not given to us last year. We call them our live funds. So we have a special mailing going out to them. We want to keep them engaged. Some of the FY22 key strategies that I have, I and the team are working on is the student, get, student giving program that I mentioned, the 1882 challenge. Uh, we're going to put an increased focus on planned giving because a lot of the research that I have done shows that there's going to be a 12% increase in people making planned gifts. And a lot of this has been due to uh, the pandemic and also to uh, just what's been happening in world events. Um, I, in the last couple of weeks, I've received two planned gift um, requests, bequests from uh, past VSU alums that we are in the process of um, moving through and hopefully we'll see um, some robust gifts from. So planned giving is um, in the pipeline for us. We are working with Bank of America. They're going to be doing a series of webinars for us. Um, and they're also going to be helping us with some of our language that we will be putting out in our communications to our alums, staff, and faculty. Stewardship is something that uh, is another area that I'd like to give us um, some greater focus on. After the gift, a lot of people think that all the work goes into getting the gift. It really is the stewardship part, the part that comes after. Um, being good stewards of a gift is very important. That's how we instill confidence. That's how we create a legacy. And that's how we continue to get gifts from people like Mackenzie Scott. So I will be putting an increased emphasis on stewardship. Um, you will be seeing something coming from me called from the desk of Tanya Hall, which will be, back up, which will be an update on what's going on in the Office of Institutional Advancement. That will start next week. Um, it will have, it will hopefully inspire, engage, encourage, and keep you informed about what we're doing with the gifts that we have received. So look forward to seeing uh, those coming out regularly from me. Uh, the, so the next slide, this was fun, um, and it was also inspiring. We um, actually got um, a two so the builder, Ms. Mark Turner, Mr. Mark Turner, who did the construction on Storm Hall, he actually started two scholarship, endowed scholarship funds um, with his family. Um, his, his Rose, help me, Rose is his grandmother or aunt? Show me that. Dr. William and Rose Ward, um, he started two endowments, one for them. Uh, there, I believe she's his grandmother or his aunt, um, and they are VSU alums. And the other one is Dr. Paula Johnson. She is also a VSU alum. So he, as the builder, gave back to Virginia State University in the form of starting two endowed scholarships. So that was very um, exciting for us. We have our alumni weekend coming up. Uh, we have a very, it's going to be a hybrid weekend, so we have some in-person and some virtual events. Starting on Friday, uh, our own Dr. Cheryl Mango 
is going to be doing a history of HBCU, um, and that will be vir held virtually. And then later on that evening, we'll have a virtual hangout with a comedian. On Saturday, we are going to have an alumni executive board meeting. Uh, and then later on that evening, socially distanced, we will be having a Trojan all-white dinner um, on the Foster, Foster Hall back lawn. You'll learn more about that as well. And is Franklin on? Nope. Okay. So I'm going to I'm on. To, oh, Franklin's here. Franklin is our president of our Virginia State University Alumni Association. I'm going to have Franklin um, have a few remarks before we move on to some acknowledgments and resolutions. Thank you. Um, good morning, uh, Board of Visitors. Um, thank you for uh, adding me to the agenda. I had sent it out a uh, uh, little late. I had my wires crossed, but I stayed up and made sure I uh, got the presentation together. I'm not sure if you all have it in your books or if, Dr. Red, if I can bring it up on my own, just let me know. And I'll be very brief. Well, while the presentation is coming up, I again want to thank you for the this opportunity. Um, this year with VSUAA, just um, like everyone else, we have been navigating the pandemic. Um, our chapters have still been meeting virtually. One of the things that we thought would be beneficial for our, not only our larger chapters, but our smaller chapters, we as the association purchased um, a larger license um, where they can uh, use, uh, you know, schedule Zoom meetings. So that has been very beneficial. Uh, we had uh, at our last, the last time I presented to the board, uh, we talked about um, elections were coming up. And so on this slide, you see um, my executive board, uh, myself as president, Dr. Michael Rainey as vice president, Mrs. Irene Logan as our treasurer, and Ms. Keanu Yates as our financial secretary. Um, if you go to the next slide, we will continue. Julian Jackson as our reporting secretary, uh, Tiffany uh, Gullins is our correspondence secretary. Uh, Mrs. Gracie Qualls is our chaplain, and Crystal Burns serves as our parliamentarian. So uh, we will, that is the executive board until uh, next uh, May. Um, during, uh, before uh, the pandemic hit, we had a few new chapters that uh, came into the fold. Um, so there has been a new chapter established in Daytona, uh, Jacksonville, Orlando, Florida. Um, they're covers, covering those three service areas. Um, there's also a chapter that was established in Delaware, um, New England is covering Connecticut and I think parts of Massachusetts and Rhode Island. And then also the VSU AA, um, VSU Alumni Band chapter was established as well. So we have four new chapters that we added to um, the total number of chapters for VSU AA. This slide just provides a breakdown of where our chapters are located. As you can see, we uh, have in-state, out-of-state and professional chapters. Just an example of what falls under the category of a professional chapter would be uh, the alumni band, the gospel choir, um, uh, Purple Army, which is Omega Sci-Fi, Men of Crimson and Cream. They are some of our professional chapters. Um, and also that includes a lot, some of our at-large members as well. So we have total a total of 53 active chapters around the country and, and continue to grow. We have one that's in the pipeline that probably will be approved at our May uh, board meeting. Uh, uh, some alum that are members of the Persian Angels um, had submitted their information for membership. So we will probably approve them uh, in our May meeting and that will bring our totals up to 54. As you look at the numbers, our membership numbers did go down because of the pandemic, but um, we still had a tremendous growth when it comes to life membership. Um, between 20, uh, 2020 and to date, we have um, over 50 new life members. Um, that has been an amazing jump. We've seen an increase in life membership and also within our annual membership numbers, an uh, increase in uh, at large. And at large membership is, you know, an alum or a uh, support of VSU can join. Uh, um, if they don't have a chapter in their local area and they just pay their uh, $30 to support uh, their national dues. So our total for the year, year to date is 1,276. Um, we usually cut off our, we still accept the membership, but we count it anything after April uh, 15 goes to the following year. When we look at our VSU AA assets, um, our life membership money goes into a different fund. So we do not use that as operating. 
Um, the past couple of years, we've opened two investment funds um, over at Edward Jones. One of the, the fund that has 155,000, that, that money was given to us by an alum and we invested it. On um, the tuition assistance, as you can see those figures, those that money comes from, we have a partnership with GEICO. Um, they're our affinity partner. So, um, and we'll, I'll talk about that in another slide, but a lot of that funding and we also, other donations or uh, we call it the board lay down. We ask each board member to lay down a hundred dollars and sometimes their chapter um, does that. Out of that tuition assistance fund uh, last, you know, last semester, we were able to help students both uh, fall and spring with incidentals for books, from books to late validation fees to uh, room and board. So looking at all of our assets, including our uh, endowment funds on uh, the, with the VSU Foundation, uh, VSU AA, we stand, uh, we have over uh, seven, seven hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars in uh, assets. Um, and and a lot of uh, we're going to be looking at moving and investing some of the life membership um, money. So I definitely will be talking to uh, the Office of Institution Advancement about that. When it comes to the partnership with Geico, uh, like I said it before, Geico has been our affinity partner with the Alumni Association for probably over twelve years. It started off with just the uh, you call in or do it online to get a quote, and we would get a percentage but that relationship has flourished over the years. Um, and now uh, for that, we are renegotiated the contract. And so VSU AA will be receiving $19,000 um, over the next three years. And that money is broken down from two entities within GEICO, from GEICO, um, uh, main GEICO, and then also they have a sports division. And I had um, the pleasure to introduce our rep to uh, our AD, um, Peggy Davis. And so uh, we're going to be partnering with them where Geico will be sponsoring uh, the student athlete of the week. And also at the MPC, we have permanent signage. And uh, so I'm glad that I was able to you know, start that partnership because they want to do more with VSU when it comes to athletics. And also we have a partnership in the pipeline working with uh, career services um, and connecting our students with Geico for careers after graduating from Virginia State University. Um, some amazing news with the um, Alumni House, the Ezra South. Um, there's going to be a lot of work going on over there, but the first one, uh, we were contacted by uh, the uh, National Park Service um, about going forward uh, to solicit to see if we can get a national designation for the Alumni House. Um, so that process is ongoing. Uh, we're excited about that because, again, like uh, VP Hall said, um, people are coming to us. Uh, which is amazing. Also, another big um, initiative that we will be working out starting the project in July. Uh, we also were submitted to uh, receive a grant from Benjamin Moore. So the National um, Trust for Historical Preservation um, reached out to us, they submitted us and we received the grant. Um, so we're gonna be receiving uh, paint to paint the interior and exterior of the alumni house. I think there hasn't been a paint job on the alumni house probably for, 15 years. So we're excited about, you know, doing some repairs to uh, the alumni house and getting that done. In conjunction with that, we're going to be involving our students. Um, they're going to be doing a documentary. So I'm going to be working with uh, to see if we can have some uh, our communication students uh, shadow the documentary crew as they come down. And also um, with uh, Ms. Meredith being uh, starting the art department, want to reach out to some of our art students to see if they will help with the painting. So it's, you know, uh, they they did a great um, press release and story about her um, doing Women's History Month. And so we're just excited that we received the grant. It was us and another site in New Orleans uh, that received the grant this year to uh, make restorations and updates to their historical property. Um, just a couple uh, last things. Um, because of the pandemic, we did not have uh, our annual meeting last year. So the last time we awarded um, our VSU awards, uh, we extended the period. So uh, these are award win winners from the Lemma Center of the Year down to individual chapter awards. We usually announce those at um, our annual meeting that we usually have on alumni weekend. Um, so we're excited about you know recognizing those chapters uh, for their hard work and dedication. And on the last side, it's just our alumnus of of the year, um, Ms. Lynette Crenshaw Camp. She will uh, serve as our alumnus of the year until 2022. Uh, VSU AA as a whole, we're 
just excited to continue to work with the university hand in glove to make sure that we're there to support. I want to thank Dr. Abdullah and also the Office of Institution Advancement. Um, this is year seven for me as being alumni president and uh, under this administration, we have been, the Alumni Association has been at the table um, and working uh, more and more with the university um, to continue to uh, push the mission of BSU for and to do anything we can to support. Um, so I know I had to be brief, so that was my uh, quick update. If there are any questions, I um, will entertain those. If not, I thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you, you. Ms. Hall. Ms. Hall. <laughs> Chairman, um, we yes. do have a couple of acknowledge. We have one acknowledgement and two uh, resolutions that we need to discuss. Okay. Uh, I've been also advised that we're in overtime. So if we can do that okay. uh, in an appropriate and expeditious manner. Thank you. Sure. So the acknowledgement uh, Franklin just uh, mentioned was the acknowledgement of Ms. Lynette Crenshaw Kemp to serve as the um, <clears throat> alumni association alumni of the alumni of the year for 2020 and 2021. Um, we just need to acknowledge that. Um, and I do believe that the other resolution is the confirming of the Dominion, um, a partnership that we have with Dominion Engineer. Summer Bridge Program, to name, I'm sorry, the Summer Bridge Program, the Dominion Engineering Summer Bridge Program. Um, that is the resolution. And the next resolution, I believe we do have to go into closed session for. That is correct. Okay. okay. Uh, you should have copies of those, those resolutions. I guess we can take them one at a time, uh, if you would. Go ahead and again, um, my screen is jumping all over the place. Uh, repeat the first one for us to. The first one is just an acknowledgement for Ms. Lynette Crenshaw Camp to be named Alumni Association Alumni Champ, yes. Alumna of the Year for 2021. So that's not a resolution, right. it's just an acknowledgement. Okay, and we certainly will acknowledge that. I, I don't know that. I think it's uh, do we need to vote? We need to vote on this, correct? Dr. Ray? I don't think. We don't have to? Okay. I don't think so. Thank you. I think we need to vote on the, the Dominion Engineering Summer Bridge, changing the name of the Dominion okay. Engineering. Correct. Okay. And you had that before you? Yes. Um, it's on the screen as well. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm new. I'm going to claim the new card. We do need to vote on the acknowledgement. Okay. I've been here for seven years and I'm going to call on the, the new the new member to the card. Okay, you have before you the um, resolution. Um, acknowledging Ms. Lynette Crenshaw Camp um, as an alum of the year. Who's going okay. to call for the vote? So move. Okay. So now Second. we need to, do we have to have a roll call vote, correct? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm ready. Okay. Go ahead, Dr. Red. Thank you. Dr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Curry? Yes. Dr. Dorton joining us. Uh, Ms. Gordon? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Stephan? Mr. Stephan? He's probably muted, but it looks like he's saying yes. <laughs> Thank you. That, is, that completes the roll call. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to the next one and we'll go back to the Dominion Summer That's Program. The summer Bridge Program to the Dominion Engineer Energy Summer Bridge okay. Program. Right, if we can bring that up on the screen as well. Thank you. Yes. All right. So we need a motion first and then to call. 
So moved. Hanford. Thank you. Roll call. Dr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Grittenden? Yes. Ms. Curry? Yes. Ms. Gordon? Yes. Ms. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Sessions? He's saying yes again, right? Yeah, Check your head. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we make accommodations. <laughs> okay. And we thank uh, Board of Visitor uh, Murray for helping us with that. Thank you, and Mr. Murray. The last is the resolution uh, for the renaming of the buildings that we unnamed, but I believe we have to go into closed session for that. That is true. Okay. And Dr. Ritt will read the motion to go into closed session. Pull it down. Um, Mr. Richardson, I would like to remind you that after I read the motion, that the technical team will need about 10 minutes to close down the uh, electronic communication and to uh, ask persons in the physical room to leave. Thank you. That will be operating for the meeting. Yes. On behalf of the chair, I move that the committee convene a closed meeting pursuant to section 2.2-3711A1 and 2.2-3711A11 of the Code of Virginia for discussion or consideration of promotion and tenure, sabbatical leave of a specific university employee and or honorary degrees and or special awards, specifically renaming of four campus buildings. Additionally, I move that President Mohamed M. Abdullah, Deb Love, Senior Assistant Attorney General, Dr. Don Kong, Senior VP Provost, Ms. Tanya Hall, Vice President for External Affairs, Mr. Kevin Davenport, Vice President for Finance, CFO, Ms. Shari King Casey, Senior Advisor to the President, and Dr. Ann T. Red, Board Liaison, attend the closed meeting because their presence in the closed meeting is deemed necessary and or their presence will aid the board in its consideration of this matter. Thank you. 